Lori Friedman, and I am the Community Programs Coordinator here at Austin Community College. One of the programs I work with here at ACC is floral design. And so with the holiday season upon us, we thought it would be fun to demo some do-it-yourself ideas for your holiday planning. I'm going to walk you through how to create your own holiday table centerpiece and also how to design a wreath as decor in your house or apartment. So we'll just dive right in. So arrangement one is a centerpiece. With a centerpiece arrangement, you want the arrangement to be short and compact so that the guests can converse with each other across the table. So you start with a vase that's approximately five inches tall and you need to create some sort of grid on the top to hold the flowers. So I'm going to use a hydrangea. You give the hydrangea a little snip so that it's sitting right on the top of the vase and then you have your grid. If you cannot find a hydrangea easily at your local uh, grocery store or floral shop, there's a couple other tricks that you can do. One of them is you take a vase that is solid that you can't see through and you take some chicken wire, you ball it up into a ball, tuck it in there, and then you'll have a, a, a nice grid on the top there to use. Or another option is you can take a glass vase and you can grid with clear tape right onto the top. You make a tic-tac-toe sort of shape and then you have a grid. But if you want to get a little bit jazzy for the holidays, you can use scrapbooking tape and you can go ahead and go all the way around the vase in the full grid and then you'll have a decoration as well as a grid for your vase. But for this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and use the hydrangea. So that's your first flower. So you go ahead and you set it in there so it's sitting right on the top of the vase. The next thing we need to do is we need to create some length because remember we don't want it tall, we want it to go out wide. So you use flowers that, have, that are sort of long and lean. So this is stock. I'm going to use some stock flower and I'm going to go ahead, give it a cut, clean off all extra dead leaves because you don't want those in the water and I'm going to insert them diagonally. If I put them straight up, they're going to be straight up and down. I want to create length so I'm going to just place them in in a diagonal. I'm going to use three, three stock flowers. Generally, we operate in the rule of three to give it a nice symmetry, give it some nice balance. So we'll put one, two, and let me just get them in there a little bit. And then a third one. Go ahead and take off all the dead leaves and just insert it in in a diagonal. So you can see already we're getting some length here. The next step you want to do is you want to put in a focal flower. A focal flower is your showstopper. It's usually your biggest flower. Sunflowers work really nicely. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use a lily because we found these beautiful fall colored lilies. And the focal flower generally goes somewhere in the center of the arrangement. We never put anything dead on center. We always want something a little to the left, a little to the right. So I'm going to give it a fresh snip. And I'm going to go ahead and insert it right in through the hydrangea. And there's my focal flower. Next, we're going to add something to make the arrangement look bigger. We call these mass flowers, flowers that are large and round. So we have a couple of Gerber daisies here. So again, I'm going to give it a snip so that it'll fit nicely in my vase. It might be a little bit too long. And I'm going to go ahead and anywhere that there's a gap between my stock flowers. I'm going to go ahead and fill in with the mass flowers, the hydrangeas, or fill in the mass flowers with the Gerbers through the hydrangeas. We just keep rotating it around again using three flowers because we like things to look symmetrical. And we'll get our mass flowers in like so. And so this is a little bit too long. <clears throat> I always say floral design when you're cutting flowers is like a haircut. Cut small because you can keep cutting. You can't put the hair back on. You can't put the stem back on. And then next, we're going to add something velvety, something interesting, and that's going to be our roses. 
and uh, be careful because roses do have lots of uh, thorns on them. So I give them a cut. Again, pull off any dead flowers that aren't going to, uh, that are gonna be underneath in the water because it'll make the water rot very quickly. And then I'm just gonna start inserting them in some of my open spaces. The roses will continue to open as they're drinking the water. So they'll get bigger and bigger with each passing day. Here's a nice big one, I'll use this one. Pull off any dead leaves and just insert them in, in between your open spaces. So you can see it's coming along nicely. Now we need to add a little bit of interest to our, to our arrangement, something, some texture, some interest. So we're gonna start with some tulips. A fun fact about tulips is tulips grow even after they have been cut they grow approximately one inch a day. So I'm going to cut these a little bit on the low side and tuck them in, but by tomorrow, they're gonna to be an inch taller. So if you discover that your arrangement looks different the next day, you're not going crazy. It's because the flower is growing even though it's already been cut. And again, I am just inserting the tulips around in any of my empty spaces. Always the rule of three. Always cut off all the extra uh, foliage that you don't need. You don't want it in the water and just tuck it in into your spaces. So you can see it's coming along really nicely, but we still need a little more interest. So that's when we use greens and we use berries. So we have this green or this red Grevalia. This is called Grevalia. Now we only need a couple of pieces. So I'm just going to pull off a few sprigs pull off a couple pieces so that I have enough of a stem to get in there. And again, I'm just gonna tuck in a few pieces. You can see right away it adds some really nice color, some really nice texture. And we'll just add maybe two pieces here, see what we think, and see if that fills it in enough. And then to add a little more texture, I'm gonna add a few pieces of green. We have some seeded eucalyptus. What I love so much about this is it always has this nice little, little hang, droopy, hangy business so that you can just tuck it into the edges of the arrangement so that you get some nice pieces draping over the side. So I'm just gonna cut a few pieces, insert them in, and we'll see, we'll see what we think. It's coming along nicely. And we can also add a few berries. These are hypericum berries, but what I have noticed in Austin is you can go outside and most likely there's some form of Nandina plant growing, which is an invasive species, and it puts out tons of berries. So you can go ahead and cut that up. You can grab Nandina berries. Ligustrums put out some really nice fall berries, and those will also add some nice texture to your arrangement. So I'm just gonna tuck in a few berries here, put some on each side. And what's nice about adding a little bit of interest is remember it's a centerpiece. So people may, are going to be close, they're going to be looking at it. You wanna put something on each side because there's gonna be people looking at all sides of the arrangement. And the more interest, the more texture you put in there, the more interesting it is to look at as you're sitting there dining. Okay, so there we go, that's looking pretty good. Now the last thing we're gonna do is the ACC has a sustainable agriculture farm and they just recently grew a whole bunch of gourds. So we have some interesting shapes of gourds and we're gonna add these into the arrangement. The easiest way to do this is you can take a piece of fruit or a gourd and we use these floral picks in the floral world. You can get them at any of your local hobby store. And the floral picks usually have a wire on one side and it's a pick on the other because we use these for different uh, things. I don't really need the wire part for this, so I'm just gonna wrap it around the pick just to get it out of the way. Here's one that's finished. <laughs> <laughs> you just skewer right into the gourds that you have it on a stick. If you don't have these, a shish kebab skewer will work or a chopstick will work. So then you look through your arrangement and you see where you might have a, an, a gap. So here's my focal flower, so I don't really want to add it there because that's already showing his, the beauty of itself and these two will continue to open. But I do notice that I have a little empty space on this side. So I'm gonna just go ahead and insert my gourd right in to the center there, just to add a little bit of texture. 
And there you have your fall centerpiece. Now for this arrangement, I'm going to show you how to make a wreath. The wreath can be for both hanging up on your wall or your door, or it can set round and flat on the table as a centerpiece. So the first thing you're going to need for this kind of wreath, this is an Oasis foam wreath. You can buy these online. You might be able to find them at your local hobby store, but this is wet Oasis foam. So you have to soak this whole wreath in a tub of water for a few minutes, and it's like a sponge, and it pulls up all of the water. They come in different sizes, and generally when you purchase them, they come in a bag of two. There's two wreaths in here. This is a larger one. This is a smaller one. It takes a lot of flowers, so generally we opt for a little bit of a smaller one because you can always make it look bigger once you put the flowers in. The other really great thing about these Oasis wreaths is they're on a plastic bottom, so they're pulling all the water in. They'll keep your flowers well hydrated, but you won't get any water on your table. So you start with the, the soaked wreath. It does need to be wet, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and green all of the edges. So we have a couple of different greens here. Uh, we have some huckleberry and we have some pittosporum. But once again, you can go outside in your yard and you can cut greens off of your shrubs or um, you can go to your local grocery store. They always sell greens. Trader Joe's is a really good place. Central Market, Austin Flower Company. These are all places that you can purchase interesting flowers, interesting greens. Um, but this is pittosporum, and the reason I like using this so much, this also grows in a large shrub, if you're lucky enough to have this growing around your house, is it has some natural breaks in it, so you can get these stems every inch or two. You can just cut it right there, and then you can get a lot of pieces of green off of one stem. So I'm gonna cut a few pieces off, and then all I'm going to do is right at the lip, I'm just gonna go ahead and insert the green. Whoops, put it in a little bit of an angle so that I'm gonna start just greening the edges. Because again, if it's going to be sitting on the table, you don't really want everybody to see your, your green foam. You want it to be a little bit of a mystery of how all of these flowers are looking so beautiful on your table. This one's a little long, so I'm just going to give them a snip. You really only need about a half an inch to an inch, and I'm inserting it diagonal. The reason I'm not going straight in, which you could, let me do a long one. If I went straight in, you can see it pokes out the other side. If it's poking out the other side, it's not really able to drink from the foam, so I'm just putting it a little bit on an angle so that it stays in the foam, and I'm just working my way around the whole wreath so that nobody can see what's happening underneath all of the beautiful flowers. We can also uh, mix in other greens. It doesn't have to just be all of this pittosporum. It can uh, be a combination of greens. So for example, I do have some huckleberry here. Let me cut off a few pieces. And again, you can do the same thing. You can just cut them down into smaller pieces. I like to use a variety of greens because it just creates a little more texture. And you just fit, fit it in in between some of these spaces. And just keep filling in. I'm going to just grab a few more pieces of pittosporum here to fill in the bottom of my wreath. It's going to take again, take a couple cuts here. Here's another good little one, another good little one. You can see where I cut this one. You can see the stem right there. That sometimes bothers me because it looks like I cut it right there. So I'll try and cut it real close to the base so it just looks like it's part of the plant. So let me just stick in a few more pieces here so that I you can see already how much bigger the wreath gets as you start putting these pieces in. I think this one can maybe be cut down into two. So let me give them a snip right here. They seemed a little bit big. Pull off the extra leaves that you don't need. Look for any of your gapping spots. 
and just continue to fill around on the wreath. So one of these wreaths does take a lot of flowers. It takes a lot of greens. So we will just kind of stop right there and go on to the next step. I do have a completed wreath done right here next to me so you can see how big that they do get. But we'll just move on to the next step. So once you sort of green the edge, you want to leave, you don't want to green it 100% because you still need room for all of the other flowers that are coming in. So what I chose here was prim primarily some white and green flowers because this is your holiday wreath. And when you are thinking about creating a f an arrangement like this, it's really a good idea to stick with monochromatic color theme. So if you decide you want to do red, you can do all a whole bunch of different variations of red. Or if you wanted to do something that's yellow, it would be a variation of yellow. Sometimes when you do red and yellow and purples and greens and you do all these different colors, if, if color is not really your strength, the arrangement can sometimes look a little bit like it belongs in the circus. It'll be lots of different colors and the eye doesn't know where to go. So I chose specifically to do a white one here, but you can see I'm going to use carnations and then I'm also going to use these spray roses. And they are different shades of white. They're different textures. So together, they're going to look really nice. So uh, when you buy a package of carnations, they generally come in a package of 12. So I do have 12 carnations here. So I'm going to just pull these all out at the same time. I'm going to use all 12 of them. And carnations are really relatively inexpensive. They're super easy to find at any of your local grocery stores. Uh, if they look tight at all, you can blow on them. And you can kind of puff them up a little bit to get them a little bit rounder. They last a very long time. So I need them to only maybe have about an inch of a stem on here. So let me just give them all a quick cut so that we can get them into our wreath. I do have a garbage bag back here, but often in the floral business, we just cut everything and it lands all over the floor and then we sweep up later. I just want to get everything down to about an inch to an inch and a half stem. And then what you want to do, often people start in one spot and they put all their flowers in and then they run out of flowers. So we're going to kind of polka dot it around since that we, have, we know we have 12 big flowers to get started with. Sometimes I put them straight in on the wreath, straight up and down. Then you'll get a flower that looks uh, straight up. Or sometimes I'll put it a little bit on the side of the wreath so that it, it tips out. So I just like to do a little bit of a variety, some of them straight up, some of them out to the side. Um, just like I said, dot, polka dotting them around because we're going to fill in between all of that with some other filler flowers. So let's just maybe add a so let's put two right there. Sometimes I'll clump them together. Sometimes I'll put them alone. I just want to, you know, just get kind of some massing on here so that our wreath looks nice and full. And these do have a nice spot. They're going to all go in roughly at the same point because there's a, a calyx on the bottom of the carnation. So it's just going to stop right at the wreath. Um, the carnations do so great. They last such a long time. They're super inexpensive. And um, when you put them together, when they're, when they're by themselves, they have one sort of look. But when they're massed together in a grouping, they, ha they, they get a really nice fluffy look. So let's put him up here. The one thing about the Oasis uh, foam is it does start, if you stick the flower in and you pull it out, you stick it in, you pull it out, you start to get too many holes in the Oasis and it begins to fall apart. So you want to, once you kind of put them in, you sort of want them to stay. And if I pushed him in and then I would, pushed them all the way in and I wanted them to be out a little bit and I pull them out, what happens is that part is not touching the foam anymore and he's not going to get good hydration. So once you put them in and you can't really lift them back out, it just needs to be where, where you set the flower. So you can see that we sort of got our polka dot of the white. And now what we're going to do is we're going to fill in with spray roses and, oh, I got one more. Let's use them all up. So I'm going to look where it looks like maybe I have some gaps. I think I need one here. 
Let's fill it right in there. And the spray roses, also you can find at any of your local grocery stores. Uh, the nice part about the spray roses is there's multiple stems. So I'm gonna, same thing, I'm just gonna cut all of these off because really I only need about an inch on each stem. I'm gonna cut them all off. I'll cut these off also. And even these little buds will open, so you want to use everything that you can. This one's a little bit big. I'll cut them down a second time. And then you're just going to start filling in the roses into some of your gaps, doing the same thing, getting them all the way into the oasis. Let's get a nice big one. Some of these are real open, some of these are real tight. So if it's real open, I might just put it by itself. If it's real tight, like these two, I might just keep these together. Again, those roses will continue to open as they sit in the, in the foam. This wreath will last you at least a week as long as the foam stays hydrated. And you just move yourself around finding all your gaps, filling in with your roses, and you can see how the textures are different. It creates a lot of interest. This one's a pretty big clump. I'm just gonna keep them together. I've got a nice big gap right here. You generally, when you're putting the flowers in, try your very best to use the stem and not have your hand on here pushing them in this way because it'll bruise the roses. Carnations can handle a little bit of a a hardier grip, but the roses need a little, little more gentle care. So I'm going to just add a few here. I'm going to shut my um, ones that I cut off here, but then I'm because I want to get onto the next step here. And then one of the things that you can always find at the local grocery store are daisies or daisy mums. They generally come in a a pack, you can sometimes get three for $10, and um, they're very inexpensive. So here's some green buttons. And a lot of times when people are trying to work with these in a vase arrangement, they are tricky, because if you try and put this whole thing in this vase arrangement, you're stuck with this whole clump of flowers. So these work really great for cutting up and using for small oasis things. So really some white daisies with a little yellow top would have worked really nicely in here in our monochromatic theme. You can never go wrong with green. So since I was doing white, I figured a little green would work out just fine. Uh, I could also add white daisies in here. And then the same thing, I'm just going to fill in anywhere that I see some gaps to get a little bit of interest. This is a nice texture on it. So I'm have kind of a big clump of white here. I want to break that up with a little bit of green. Some, sometimes I'll tuck the, the flowers in real tight. Sometimes I'll actually have them sticking up a little bit higher than the other flowers. Like here, I'll put that one a little bit taller so you can see. And you just go ahead and you just keep filling in on your, on your spots until you get, oops, that was a little too long. Give them a cut like the haircut, if you can, can't put it back on, but you can cut them down. This is much too long. You really only need about that much. Keep filling in. You can see how nice and luscious this is starting to look. And what I'm going to do, I'm not gonna fill the whole thing in now, just based on the nature of time. I'm just gonna show you a couple other tricks. But basically that's what you do is you keep filling in and then you're gonna go back to your greens as you can see in our example here and you're gonna add more greens but you just wanted to start the rim first. So I still have more of this huckleberry that I can use. So I'm gonna just take some little pieces. I'll do this spot right here. And you're just gonna fill them in just to create some height, some depth, some interest, and wherever you think you might need them. Like I said, go out in your yard. You could use Nandina berries would look really nice. Um, a lot of times the Ligustrum berries, I just love those because they're like a deep purple color. And uh, so let, let me just stop there for a second because I just want to show you the next trick. So the other thing you can add in here is you want some interest. Branches work great, pine cones work great. 
So I have a few branches here. This is just birch branch. You could again go cut off anything out of your yard. And I just want to get a couple little pieces. I'm just going to cut them down. Just, and it's just for interest. Generally, the more texture you add into an arrangement or anything that is you know, rough looking or textury looking, it just creates a little more interest and makes it look a little bit more natural. And so I'm going to just go ahead and insert a few of these twigs in here and there. I'm going to put three of these together because I kind of like a little, little clump looking. So you can see a few twigs together. What I am going to just show you real quick on this arrangement that we made ahead of time is that we used um, some birch that had been spray painted uh, with some glitter on it. So this is sort of a nice little way to add more of a holiday flair or if you're going to maybe use this for New Year's or January and you want a little bit of sparkle, you can just go ahead and spray paint the birch branch with a gold or silver paint. You can also, which is a really nice trick, take a little bit of Elmer's glue and just tap just the top part of each of these into the Elmer glue and then stick it into a pod of glitter and then you'll just have all these little glittery ends. And then also pine cones. Pine cones work really nicely too. So as I was telling you about these floral picks that have a pick on one side and then, then they have the wire on the other side. So the wire is to use for anything that you may want to attach. So I'm going to go ahead and just attach this pine cone. So I'm just going to wrap the wire around the pine cone, tighten it up so that now I can insert him into my arrangement. So he's attached real nice and tight. And you can see that this pick is much too long. They're just, as you, they're just very easy to cut down. So I'm just going to make it about an inch. And then I'll just find a little spot where I feel like a nice little pine cone might work really nicely. So we could put a pine cone there. Again, we work in the rules of threes. So I would probably want to put three pine cones in here. Um, but you can use anything that you have found that'll work in your yard. Um, a friend of mine just was posting that she has an, a citrus tree in her yard and she didn't really know what she it was she didn't really know what to do with all of the oranges so I just said cut the branches off and with the oranges still on them and you can use them right in the arrangements but you could uh, add any kind of fruit to this so you can see just adding a few pine cones creates a lot of nice interest so I'm just going to go over here to this finished one so this can hang up on your door, on your wall, is a nice fresh wreath. But the other thing that you can do to it, let me change sides here, oops, is you can lay it flat on the table and it can be a centerpiece just like that. Or if you have a glass face, you can set it right in the center or even any kind of large candle. Now they even have them where you just can turn them on but you can add a nice vase. You can use some two-sided sticky tape and stick it to the bottom of your candle. This stuff is so sticky, it's sticking to my fingers. Let's get it on there. And then it'll insert right in here so it'll hold your candle in place. And you can have your lovely centerpiece wreath. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you can use these step-by-step -step instructions to help you with some of your own holiday traditions with your friends and family. For info on floral design classes and any other continuing education courses we have, please check out austincc.edu backslash community. Happy holidays from all of us at ACC.